Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we're going to talk about SEO ranking for your Amazon listings. We have an amazing guest. He is back. Stephen Pope from My Amazon Guy is back again to talk with us. It's been a while since we've caught up with Stephen, so we're really hoping to um, get some great updates from Stephen. He is an amazing uh, Amazon expert. He has started his career as a TV reporter and ended up in e-commerce selling all kinds of brands from gold and silver, women's plus size clothing, and Momster, which is my favorite, a private label wine glass brand for FBA. He runs an agency of Amazon services, including PPC help and all kinds of stuff. Listen, Stephen is literally a wealth of information. If you're not following Am my Amazon guy, you need to do that right away. And we are going to have Stephen back here to talk about Amazon SEO keyword practices, keyword rankings, because guess what? Your listings actually rank inside of um, all the search engines, uh, Google, everything else. So you want to make sure that your listings are not only written for the Amazon algorithm, but you're also writing those for the SEO for all of the search engines to pick up on. So without further ado, let's welcome Stephen to the show. Stephen, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, thanks for having me back on. Okay, so what is new since we haven't talked in two years? So how what is new at my Amazon guy? I know a lot of things are new. I checked out your website. There's some courses. There's other things. So just bring us up to speed on on where you're at right now. Yeah, we have 300 employees now uh, worldwide. Uh, been hiring like crazy. A lot of growth. We also launched some courses that you mentioned over at mag-school.com and. Um, we now are giving away a lot of our SOPs and processes and certificates, and we hit a thousand videos on YouTube, which was also kind of neat. So yeah, a lot of good milestones this year. That is so exciting. Now, I know I know that uh, we'll get to all this fun SEO stuff and keywords, not ranking and everything else. But at first, I really just want, you know, as a as a leader in the Amazon space, I really respect how much value you bring to the table, especially how, how your position of leadership with your company has brought such a great employee culture. So can you talk, talk a little bit about your your growth and your, your agency here? Oh, first of all, just give us a little precursor because some of us have not heard your previous episode, which you guys episode 150 if you want to go back and see Stevens uh, see and or listen to his previous one it's always good great value you will learn something from that episode so don't just dismiss it because today we're talking about something different um so go back to episode 150 listen to that but bring us up to speed tell us about your agency a little bit and then how much you guys have grown because 300 employees worldwide that is huge it, it is a lot of fun I'll tell you that like when I first started the agency I thought I was going to be running an agency marketing business, right? But in reality, what it ended up becoming is an HR company, right? Like everything that I do is built around culture, like all day long. And, you know, I'll give you an example. I, I had a guy, you know, and this is, this might sound a little ridiculous. I, so bear with me here a moment, but I had a gentleman that, that works for me and direct report into me. And he, he had diarrhea for like 60 days. And I kept telling him, I'm like, man, you got to go take a probiotic got to take a probiotic, man. And, and like, he finally took the probiotic a few days ago. And guess what happened? <laughs> no longer has diarrhea. So like, I feel like I spend more time focused on people and their problems and what their challenges are than I do focused on trying to actually run the company. And that quite frankly is actually running the company, right? Like it's all about people. Um, that's what I absolutely respect and love about what you guys do over at my Amazon guy. Yeah. Services. Great. I mean, we have, you have top notch services. You've got, um, refunding and trademarking and things like that. And we'll definitely get into all that you guys provide the PPC help, all these things. But the reality is your employees and your workers are the best because you're a good leader because you have decided that there are you're too kind. Their, their comfort is more important than necessarily they perform better when you support them better. Is that what you're saying? I, I'll put it another way. Put it into a metaphor for it. Happy cows make more milk. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I love that. And, and I'm not calling my employees cows, but the point is the same, yes. right? Like if you, if you put employees at the top of your pyramid and have clients and customers beneath the employee, because you can't serve two masters, mm -hmm. you can only serve one or the other. You will have happier employees, which will make 
happier customers and clients because happier employees do better work. It's just bottom line. And it, you, keep, you keep better employees. Agencies also have a lot of high turnover. It's a very chaotic job. Amazon, also super chaotic, right? And for years, I've been studying what Gary Vee has pulled off. Because when Gary Vee made his agency, he talked a lot about uh, how most, most agencies only have a tenure of 12 to 18 months for their employees. That's what he was told when he first made his agency. And he said, well, maybe at your agency, but at mine, it's going to be five or 10 years. Now, I, I, I don't know how far along in this process of cracking that question I am today, but I'm hyper-focused on it at the very least. Well, and the great thing about that is it's true in any situation, right? If you are kind and understanding and 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 help people feel supported and accountable, even in relationships and marriage in in parenting and anything like that, people naturally perform better when they feel supported and happy and feel like they can handle the task and they feel like they can go to you as a leader if something's going wrong. And so you guys, this isn't just an agency that I'm talking about or just another person. This is someone who is leading from the top down, somebody that I respect, something that that is just um, just like you said, the culture, because you can perform better. They can perform better when everyone feels supported. So because you have such a great company, um, let's talk about a little bit about what you guys do at this great company, because we know your turnover rate. Okay. Go back to that for one second. So you said 12 to 18 months. So how long are your people staying at this point? I I'll be honest. I don't actually know the answer to that question. And now I'm going to have to go find out, (laughs) Uh, but but I will tell you this, every three or so months, we do um, a two question survey. Do you have the tools to do your job? And would you recommend working at my Amazon guy to a friend? And every single time we've asked this question, our numbers have moved up. And I'm like, surprised by that, because like, how do you, how do you keep moving up when it's already a 9.3 or, or thereabouts, but we've continued to progress. And I'm very confident and pleased by that. Um, at the same time, I would say stress levels in the workforce are on all time highs. And, and I've never seen so much pressure from inflation, from um, just overwhelmingly, you know, post pandemic bull crap, mental illness, you name it. And, and people are really just worn out right now. And I just feel for them. And so what we're trying to do is just build an environment where people can ask questions, learn. And that's generally why people join my Amazon guys. So if you're listening to this, you want a job, Send your resume over to jobs at myamazonguy.com. For sure, you guys, if you are looking for, you know, something else to do there and you've got some Amazon experience or maybe you don't, because I bet that they train well as well. <laughs> but I we would do. tell you that, that if, you know, there, there's no shame in a side hustle, if you've got some other skills, you know, skills to pay the bills. If you can do really good PPC campaigns or, you know, you can do refunds or you can work with it in that, again, give that link again, just, just in case myamazonguy.com slash jobs. And we, we post transparently everything that we do. And um, I, I like to look at myself as a caveman with fire in prehistoric times, right? So like I figured something out. I feel like I've got some fire and I want to share that fire. You bring your torch over here. I'll light your torch. What you decide to do with your torch is completely up to you. I hope you go light the world up. Um, but what you do is up to you. Absolutely. Love, love, love that. All right. Now let's get a little bit into this SEO stuff, right? Because I have had a lot of clients and and listeners asking recently, like, what does SEO have to do with our Amazon listings? Why is this important? I thought we were only writing listings in order to pick on the Amazon algorithm. So why all this SEO stuff? And so I'm sure you can fill us in on why that's important. Well, I, there, there's so much to unpack on that question, right? So like, first thing I'll say is SEO, search engine optimization, it's not set it and forget it, right? You can't just do one round of research and then walk away. And I, and I could give you countless examples of why this is true. Um, I recently launched a new Tumblr, which is in the top 3,000 in all of home goods right now. It's in the top 50 of Tumblrs on Amazon. And it's, it's Megapint. It's to make fun of the Johnny Depp court case, right? And, you know, somebody listening to this one or two years from now is looking back at the social trends history of our, our society right now going, what the world? Mm-hmm. But, but in any case, like, I thought I had nailed it. I, I, you know, I, I was ranking number one for Megapie and I was doing all these right things. And, um, you know, and I, I always share the, the, the trends and the products I'm working on because I don't really try and make money on the products personally. I'm mostly just going through the motions to keep my skills sharp. 
but but this one was a really big learning because the the trend and the keyword data was just shifting right like and now it's all about johnny depp gifts and it's all about um pirate gifts and and we ended up taking the tumblr and now we have an eye patch that we hand out with it right and so like we're trying to level it up and trying to kit it very much use your your methodologies here of trying to level up some sort of kits and include multiple items to create that value proposition right and so along the way, we kept doing the keyword research and it kept shifting on us. And so like social trends can absolutely mess with keyword data. I'll give you a second example. So I sold a mom Mother's Day box. Uh, might be behind me. Yes. So Let me cut a box. you off for just a second. Yeah, um, go ahead. <laughs> I got my own Johnny Depp box right here. <laughs> Shit the bed. That's, there one you of go. The new, that's one of the new, you know, it's trendy. Yes, but it, it sells. <laughs> so, so, so this mom box right here. Um, is one of the items that I, I sell and it's got, you know, Tumblr and there's a, a, a card and, and soap and all this fun That's stuff. That's got my right? address on it, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> one coming near you, right? Just and kidding. we've made multiple mom gift boxes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so when I first launched this uh, in 2021, um, three weeks before Mother's Day, I sold $144,000 on that one box in four weeks, four total weeks. Spent eleven thousand dollars on ads. Okay, so how was I able to do that? I looked at the keyword data for things like gifts for mom. Well, if you look at the keyword trends over time, and you notice that between two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty, it doubled, and between two thousand twenty one and two thousand twenty, it almost doubled again. Well, there was an obvious trend line of where the keyword data and the search velocities were versus the number of products that were offered by Amazon. And so I was able to actually rank this box to SEO term rank number one for gifts for mom 24 hours before Mother's Day. Now, following the trend lines and looking at search term data, we've just set up is important, right? So like I just gave you some anecdotes about why it's impactful for my business and how I did it personally. So from here, the next question then becomes, okay, well, how do I actually do it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and here's where most people don't understand how the algorithm works. Uh, they know, they believe they've got to put keywords in their title. Like most people believe that, but they don't know how or why and what's the order and stuff like that. As one example, the search term field in the back end of Seller Central for years, the tools have been telling us put 250 characters like Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You don't actually need Johnny Depp's character in the back end of your search terms. You, you actually want bytes, 250 bytes. And I was the first in the entire internet to point this out, like, like no joke, right? And every single SEO tool was wrong. And I have this big thread on LinkedIn where I tagged them with screenshots, showing them they were wrong, referencing them to the Amazon help files, as well as screenshots of the error within Solar Central. So if any of you guys, if this is news to you and you're like, I don't know if I believe this guy, sounds pretty crazy talking about megapites. Well, you could, you could use the scientific method yourself. Go test it right now. Go into the back end of Seller Central in your search term field and just type in as many characters as you can. And you'll notice that the error message says, uh, you can't go past 250 bytes. And a byte, the difference between that and the character, as far as Amazon is concerned, is they don't count syntax. They don't count spaces. They don't count commas, et cetera. So with that in mind, if you were only doing 250 characters and somebody else was doing 250 bytes, they would actually be getting 20% more SEO juice. 20% 20% a lot. That's a difference between, you know, this sale and that sale or someone going to someone else or find being found by someone else. So it's a considerable difference. So for those of us who do not know, um, I'm sure there's listeners, I'm sure there's people that don't know that what is the difference between the characters and the bites? And how do you how do you get your extra 20%? So don't worry about spaces. And don't worry about commas. Also, the other things you shouldn't do, don't put in duplicate words. Uh, so if you're selling something like a wine tumbler, put the word wine and tumbler one time, but don't put in wine cooler, wine tumbler, wine Johnny Depp. Now, just mm -hmm. the word wine one time in that series. And that's all you have to do to keep it do on the basis. Do you repeat your title words in your search terms or no? 
I do, but only under one condition. It's when I'm first launching the product. Okay. So I run multiple phases at uh, of SEO at my Amazon guy. And phase one is all about indexing. And, and from my research through thousands of iterations, it is faster to index for a keyword when you put it in multiple locations. And when you're first launching a product, of course, the most important thing you want to be done is get indexed by the search engine. Yes. Because you don't want to just rely upon hardcore PPC costs, which are up like 35% in the last 12 months. Mm-hmm. So, so getting indexed, I do include title keywords inside of the uh, search term field. But once we go to phase two, it's about incremental indexing. You can safely slough those off after you've indexed for the phrases and then put in new ones. And then um, as you progress through the SEO phases, SEO phase three, it's more about strike zone. So now you're trying to actually rank the products, rank 20 through 50 and try and push it up to the top of search. And and those keywords are really the most valuable to focus on because you know that with a minimal amount of effort, you could go from rank 20 through 50 to rank one through 10. And then finally, the newest SEO phase, which is called the search query performance report, Um, or as I like to call the phase, the market share phase, there's this really awesome data tool that Amazon's just given out. And it's like, nobody's talking about it. It's just so amazing. It blows my mind. This is like the most concrete data we've ever gotten out of Amazon about what your personal market share is for your brand on specific keywords. And and I I, I I like this report so much. I actually have, it's in the brand da- that that's in the brand dashboard. If you have brand registry and you have your own brand, so just to clear that up, you guys, if you this is another plug, another plug. I'm gonna say it every episode until every single listener has brand registry and trademarks. Which guess what? My Amazon guy can help you with that. They have <laughs> trademarking services. They actually promise you can have a trademark up within reason, um, within seven days. So y'all, we're going to talk about that. I will give you a link at the end of this video. But before that, you need to really understand that brand registry and trademarking has more value than you can spend on the trademark itself because of the protection, because of these new reports, because of these exact keywords. Like I'm sure, I I don't know, like people that don't have brand registry, they like don't get it, right? So we just have to like brag a little bit more about brand registry. When you open your dashboard and you look at that, you can literally look at comparisons side by side. People who searched for your item eventually bought this item and they can still show you the reasons why. I mean, why aren't people using this? I don't know, but I'm using it almost every day. <laughs> it's an incredible amounts of data. And, and by the way, we just surpassed filing 1000 trademarks. There's another milestone for you. Love it. Um, and and usually if, if I had to guess, there's probably somebody at home still unconvinced by you that they need a trademark. And they're like, all I do is just kit other people's branded stuff. Why would I need a trademark if I'm doing that? Here's your answer. If you trademark a brand name where you are kidding, even though you have no unique products and you're just kidding, collecting you guys, different just items. By, just so you know, for listeners, kidding is bundling. Just We're just using the words interchangeably here. Kits, bundles, accessories. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about wholesale bundles here. So sorry, continue. No problem. So <laughs> if you are doing wholesale bundling slash kits you <laughs> and you don't have any brand equity, you should still get a trademark and file the kits, the bundle under your own brand name, yes. because then you prevent hijackers. Then you prevent all of these other data problems and the other uh, brands can't come after you. And in addition to that, you get all the benefits that Kristen was talking about, the brand registry, the all E-plus the content. Um, and like by the having, way- well, and, and I think the, there a few episodes ago, we actually talked to one of our favorite trademark attorneys. We had a couple of them on here. And the, the way we just to go over that again, you guys listen to the trademark episode, go back a few episodes, search for it wherever you get your podcast and listen to the episode because- there's people that are afraid about that. Like if you're just making bundles, if you're just making kits, then how how can you get away with them being, you know, here's the mommy income brand, right? I put all my stuff in here. It's got my brand out. They're like, but that's not your brand. You're using other products in there. Well, actually we're branding the service of creating kits and gift baskets. One of my trademarks is in gift baskets. So the service is what I'm trademarking, not necessarily the products that are inside of it. So there's two ways to be able to do bundling for Amazon that's trademarked. And so that is the reason, but the benefits are so, uh, so outweigh the investment of getting a brand and people are like, oh, just 
get one. <laughs> and and by the way, A plus content totally indexes. And and if you yes. don't believe me, here's your next scientific experiment. Go put Spanish keywords behind one photo's alt text, and it will index in under 48 hours, proving that A plus content indexes. And if A plus content indexes, what does that mean? That means you need 500 words of crawlable text and copy in your enhanced brand content. So that means you got to write a little bit more than you might've thought. It's not just your title and bullets. It's also the A plus content that needs crawlable copy. That means don't put the text inside the photo. Also question for that, because we are going to talk about your bundle, which is your five course bundle that talks about these SEO practices. Now I'm guessing that you're teaching how to do that within one of these courses. Am I correct? We, we do. And, and we launched the courses because I really wanted to commoditize Amazon education, right? So like I have a thousand videos where I give all this stuff away for free, right? but we're now giving a certificate, a test to prove you're competent in this, right? So if you want to prove to your own self that you know how the algorithm actually works, I'll give you a little secret. The Amazon help files suck. Mm -hmm. they're, they're incomprehensible and incomplete and often inaccurate. And, and so like, I, I'm literally getting three messages a week from Amazon employees thanking me for actually talking about how the algorithm actually works. And they are citing my works internally to each other. Yeah. And so, so like, that's a, that, obviously that's a great compliment to receive, but it's also just proof that you actually have to test things to understand how they work. You can't just go off of um, a help file. Yeah. Amazon, um, we call them the unhelp files. <laughs> Like this, this podcast, your podcast, your YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, and, and the several other people in the space are doing really great stuff. You guys, the Amazon files, this is where you find information. The My Amazon guy, that's where you find information. Amazon unhelpful files, like they don't have those. We have them here because they made a mess of it and we figured it out. So we're here to teach you and train you and you guys, um, mommyincome.com forward slash my Amazon guy. First of all, it's going to get you to all of Steven's stuff and all the amazing stuff. But again, you putting them into the specific order because yeah, we all love free. Free is my favorite price too. But the reality is time is money. And if you want to get it faster and you want to get it done now and you want to have these tests done by the end of your day, then you take a course because education is absolutely everything. I know Steven, I know myself, I am constantly taking courses. I'm constantly testing things. I'm constantly trying to see if the stuff is going to work out because you know what, honestly, as much as we love Amazon and we love the fact that they're, they're putting lots of dollars in our pockets, they're also frustrating as all get out to deal with on a regular basis. And we have to figure their system out for them and then let them know. <laughs> Jeff Bezos makes my job so easy all the time. That's what every Amazon seller is thinking at home, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. or, or I okay. call them like on my, on my social media, I put what I call Amazon poll jokes because every day when you open seller central, there's a new one. Oh, what was it the other day? It was, uh, Amazon provides clear guidance on how to improve my account health rating. <laughs> That's called Amazon poll jokes around here because I post Memes. them on social. I'm like, this is hilarious. Like strongly disagree is usually the answer. Um, <laughs> Amazon provides peace of mind. That's another one that I read the other day. I'm like, is this Dude, that, that that's actually a core value I'm trying to give my own clients right now and trying to define like what that means. But yeah, they don't give, Amazon does not give anybody peace of mind, especially about their, ah, I'm just getting my accounts suspended this morning and wake up. Um, but yeah, just to finish the, the course bundle thing. So 55 bucks, SEO catalog, PPC design and reviving sales courses. These are the yeah. fundamentals on how to navigate all of the Amazon things you need to know and understand. Absolutely. And you know, what? I'm actually going to be linking this um, to my new course that's coming. I mean, it's not a new course. My course has been out forever. It's just being fully overhauled and updated because Amazon does that on a regular basis. So everything's got to be updated. So Wholesale Bundles 3.0 is dropping at the end of this summer. If you guys don't have it, links for all this stuff is going to be in there as well, because this is just amazing supplemental data that you guys can have. So we're talking, okay, so we left off 500 or more words crawlable words in our, um, our A plus content. And of course, A plus content is only available for people with brand registry. So again, get brand registry. How do you do that? You find a name, you get a trademark. You can do that through my Amazon guy as well. Um, or you can go to our resources page at mommyincome.com and you can look at the resources as well there because you've got to be able to search. So you've got to have all those things. So basically you're not going to do a whole lot of this without 
A plus content, um, the, and then Spanish phrases. So you said you can test them with Spanish phrases. What else? So I want to go back to the search query performance report yes. because there's so much data in here and I'm going to give you an example. So um, week 13 of the year of 2022, I looked at this report and I noticed that I had a keyword sage candles for cleansing house. Okay. So I sell incense smudge sticks. I'm not the target audience by the way, but um, I found an opportunity there and I started selling. Well, what, what I found was, is that during week 13, I only had a brand share of less than 3% of all impressions. However, the amount of clicks, the CTR percentage was 7.5%. The add to carts was almost 9%. And what this told me was, is that people, while they were looking for what they thought were, were candles, were more interested in my smudge skits. And so what I ended up doing is I retooled all of my SEO and my PPC focus. And week 20, within seven weeks, I'd taken my brand share of impressions from less than 3% to now more than 21%. So this is a great use case example of how you can look at a data set and find immediate activity and action tips. You go look at this brand search query report, hey, Amazon's already ranked it from most important to least important of words they think you should do better on. And generally speaking, you can see this following trend. If you have an increase of conversion, the deeper into the marketing funnel you go, that is, you have a percentage of impressions that gets higher by clicks, which gets higher by add to carts, which gets higher by purchases. Those are the four different things that Amazon tracks in the search query report. What that tells you is you need to focus on getting more impressions. Why? Because you're converting higher than the competitors. Therefore, whenever you have high conversion, what is the activity you should do? Go get more traffic. More traffic. And I, I personally think that traffic is 10 times more important than conversion. So take a signal like this and then go chase the traffic. So what I ended up doing is I put it into more exact match PPC campaigns. I put in an exact match of the keyword into my title, even though I don't even freaking sell a candle. And I put it into the A plus content and get, and that's exactly what happened. I then, I, I more than seven X my market share of that term. And that's just one keyword. And by the way, that keywords volume, 2,500 search volume. 2,500 so, people don't miss that. Stop searching for stuff that has a million, you know, search curies per month. You don't need that. You can actually make a decent amount of money on something that has a two. Thank you for saying that number out loud too, because so many people have argued with me be like, that search volume is too low. I'm like, not if you do it right. It's not. <laughs> would you like 20% of the market share of a 2,500 search volume keyword, or would you like ne next to 0% of the market share of a couple hundred thousand? Keyword. I like option A all day long. And like yeah. another thing people argue about is, um, you know, like volume versus margin. I'm like, I'd had rather have margin all day long than worry about constant volume. I'm like, I don't want to have to manage 10,000 pieces a day. How about just a hundred pieces a day at 10 times the profit margin that you're making? That's a better deal for me. It, it's much easier. That's for sure. So because you can use this report to find different angles, whether it's to increase your impressions, maybe your CTR is super low and that's where your problem is. Well, guess what? Now you know that you have a CTR problem, click-through rate problem. So what's the, what's the solution to a better CTR? Fix the main image, this, right? The images, that's right. Run, run some A-B tests, run some uh, pick food test, whatever it might be to figure out how to increase that CTR. So, so I just gave super specific, insightful things that will increase your traffic today. And it's all in one report. It's free. Go check out the search query performance report. Uh, inside of brand analytics dashboard. And if you don't have brand registry, so you can't check your brand and your search career, curie, I hate that word, uh, performance, then your step is to go get a trademark so that you can get brand registry so that you can have access to things like this. And you can get, so, you can get access in less than seven days. And less than you, seven this is days. specifically in the US, US pending trademarks are accepted now. They changed this two years ago. So if you see anything conflicting online, it's just outdated information. Yes. Um, so you can get brand registered in under seven days. You don't need the IP accelerator. Uh, and we do use a lawyer on our side too. So thousand trademarks filed over at my Amazon guy. Yes, for sure. And you want to get that and you know, you need the, there's all kinds of resources for that, but that is very much outdated. If you have a registered 
even pending, you registered your trademark, you filed the application, you can use that serial number to get your brand registry. However, um, if it's denied for some reason and eventually abandoned after that certain number of times, then they will pull it and they will say, you get Sorry, six months. This isn't for yeah. So yeah, you, you have get up six, to six months, months to get your duckies in a row and to get it together, make sure. I actually just had another trademark I was filing that has another office action and have to handle all that because of their subjective or just annoying. Yes, but it works. It's fine. All they needed is another specimen. So it's okay. But these things happen. I have plenty of trademarks I've registered myself because I have multiple brands and I just need them all protected. Um, because, you know, you don't want to sell your, your baby clothes and your, you know, mom wine glasses with your auto parts or you know if you sell adult <laughs> things or you sell something else i mean there's so many different reasons to have different brands you're allowed to have different brands you're allowed to have different accounts um proceed with caution of course you guys listen to that episode we did one a few months back or whatever about having two separate accounts um which is fine now but it didn't used to be so these are you know so bottom line boiling down to SEO, it is important to get traffic from other places besides Amazon's algorithm. Now, everyone that sells on Amazon knows that most people, you know, you, you would assume, right? We make assumptions that most people that have Amazon go there first to look for things. But a lot of times people go to Google first. And if you're not ranking on Amazon, you're not going to come up first on Google either. So, you know, you can't take it for granted that people are automatically searching for the product they're searching for directly on Amazon. We need to pull traffic traffic from the rest of the internet. Fun fact, your Amazon brand store has SEO on Google. And, and so if you haven't set the meta description of your brand store, here is your five minute hack today to help you. And not only will the brand store show up on your own brand term, which gives you more exposure and control over Google, it also can rank for other keywords. So you can generate more income by setting the meta description of your brand store. Super easy to do this. You just go hit edit store and then go, go to the meta description section. You can edit this in less than five minutes, hit save, almost immediately goes through. You can start ranking it on Google for various things. Y'all, that was just a hundred dollar tip or maybe a thousand dollar tip. You don't even know because all of a sudden you could literally do that five minute thing and create value for yourself today. So just, that is so amazing. You need to say nothing else to provide all this value. I'm sure you have so much more. You guys, did you know that my Amazon guy has a podcast and a YouTube channel and a wealth of information? It's go to mommyincome.com forward slash my Amazon guy, first of all, because you want the rest of what Steven just taught us, the rest of it in the SEO course. But there's more than that. It's the PPC course, it's the catalog course, the design, you guys, less than a cost of a steak dinner. $55. And the steak costs, oh my gosh, those are going up. Thank you, I know, right? inflation. For yes, sure. I know. So, so don't give excuses that you don't know how, or you don't know where, or you don't know when you have the information here and uh, investment, investment in your business is everything investment in your, you guys know, I'm taking all of these courses too. You know why? Because I learn constantly. I'm kind of an addict, to be honest. I'm all, if I'm not like doing a podcast, I'm listening to one or I'm watching one or I'm listening to it. I love to learn new things, especially things like this that literally change your business overnight, overnight. This meta description of your store can change your business overnight. Getting a trademark and getting your store branded so that you can use A plus content will change your business overnight because you're doing the things that other people are too lazy to do or they're not interested or they think that they can get by on uh, just doing it on a dime. Bootstrapping, great. But when it comes to real investment, do things that make you money right now. And one of the things that can make you money right now is not using a set it and forget it. Okay, I wrote this listing two years ago. If you wrote your listing two years ago and it's still selling, imagine what you can do if you just give it a one up. You go back in there, change a few keywords, update some meta descriptions and some A plus content, and you could be overnight doubling your business or tripling, or like you said, 10X from the one that you did 13 in 13 weeks, another seven weeks, you're at number one. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you need to take action on immediately. So mommy it's not set and forget it. Continuous yeah. optimization. You don't need to spend 40 hours a week working on your business. Okay, but if so you let's take give us some guidelines. So if we're gonna, yeah. if it's not a set it and forget it, then the next question I anticipate is, well, how long is this stuff really going to take? And how much time do I need to spend on it per day, week, month or whatever? So let's just give some guidelines. So in our podcast today, we've given two or three five minute hacks that literally only take five minutes. 
But if you just added SEO in as, as something you work on for one to three hours every month in a chunk and then keep doing it, you will see continuous gains. And you can track these changes. You can track your keyword rankings. Um, and there's lots of SEO tools out there that do this. And there's so many, so much value from understanding and quantifying, right? Like everything must be measured. Don't take any activity that can't be measured. Otherwise, it's just a waste of your time. And so these are specific actionable things where we've given anecdotes about how they impacted my business and how you can also measure them and do it yourself, scientific method style. And so it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now it can be really overwhelming. Like for so someone in my store, for example, and I have uh, 200 plus SKUs, multiple brands, multiple places to be looking for things, um, you know, an hour a week, a couple hours a week, or even hiring someone else to check on these things for you and doing that so that you can be working on bringing better products to the table or different products or new products or things like that. Well, this stuff is being done. So when you're at that level, you can hire this stuff out. And if you're not, then you can simply do it yourself maybe an hour a week, depending on how many SKUs you have, do not set it and forget it. I have so many clients that come to me week after week and they're like, okay, this was doing great before and now it's not selling. And there's definitely ways to, to look at those things as well. Number one, indexing, then ranking, then are you out of stock? Have you been out of stock? Oh, don't even get me started. That's the number one rule of Amazon's don't go out of stock. And the second rule is like the first, don't go out of stock. Yes. Don't go out of stock because I literally have had clients have this happen over and over again to where they have something they launched that was killer. And then they they were out of stock for two or three weeks. They're like, now I can't even sell one. Here's another tip. Buy a year's supply of inventory. Financially difficult to do this, obviously. But if you do and you keep some in reserve, you can have a duplicate SKU. Duplicate your SKU on the same ACE and have one FBA SKU and a second for FBM. And then when your FBA stocks out, guess what? Your FBM is automatically live. You can have it a dollar higher and it just triggers in automatically. And that way you don't go out of stock. Well, and I've also gotten desperate and had a couple uh, around the house while I'm waiting for for the the rest of them to get back in. And I'll make the price ridiculous just so that the listing's live. But there's your margin. Yeah, but it's just. It's, it's still a live listing rather than being uh, showing out of stock or unavailable. It just happens to be insanely priced. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's another activity right on your calendar, guys, uh, for Black Friday weekend, where everybody else is running sales, I want you to increase your prices 10 to 20%. And we are so we, aligned on all of our strategies when it comes because we're old school, right? We've been around for a long time. That's what I tell it. people too. I'm like, listen, on Black Friday weekends or even the weekends before that, prices go up. Why? Because as other people are selling out at the cheap prices, you slide in there You're for still in. double or triple. <laughs> yeah. So I, I told uh, I told a, another wine glass company to raise their prices on December 2nd of 2020. They sent me a note on January 1st that they made an extra net income net, not gross net $100,000 in the month of December, because they raised their prices 20%. Yeah, yeah, they were thrilled. That Take was note. that was off of one phone call suggestion. So instead of paying me for a coaching call, just write this on your calendar right now, Black Friday weekend, raise prices 20%. Send me an email to podcast at my Amazon when you when you make more margin later. Yeah, for sure. It's, just, it's like, thank me later. You can write your thank you note in advance right now to Steven at my Amazon guy, because you're going to get a lot more money from that inquiry. All right. Well, you guys know, we've said it a million times, mommyincome.com forward slash my Amazon guy. My biggest suggestion here is to get this five course bundle, five courses, $55. Y'all that's $11 a piece. That's like a Starbucks coffee. I don't even drink Starbucks coffee, but I know it's that expensive. So the, you guys almost, it, it'll pay for about a gallon of gas in two years as well. Oh my gosh. A gallon. <laughs> okay. Don't even get me started on that. I'm walking everywhere from now on. <laughs> it's a good thing. I don't do retail arbitrage. <laughs> yeah. Now these gas prices. Oh my goodness. So my Amazon guy, you can find Steven everywhere else. Of course, you guys, I it's a, a number one recommendation. If you're not following, if you're not listening, if you're not watching, you are missing money making tips from Steven daily, almost daily, at least weekly, but if not daily, all great stuff. So please um, follow him there. Steven, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. Thank you for coming to the Amazon files. Thank, 
Thanks. Thanks for having me on. And, and you've been a delight. Thanks so much. Thank Kristen. you. I don't take that for granted. You guys know you can um, join the Facebook group anytime. Your my Amazon guy, M-A-G, is your code word, mommyincome.com forward slash join us. That's where you get all the goodies and everything else there. And don't forget to get your five course bundle. I'm talking SEO, PPC, catalog design, and reviving sales. So don't come to me and say, oh, my stuff's not selling after I launched it or I went out of stock. Um, You have resources here that you can tap into and they're not going to break the bank, but they are going to be super high value, super high value. I wouldn't tell you guys that if it wasn't. So thank you again so much for coming and we'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.